Hello friends and welcome back to the channel where we delve into the mind of a villain. In this entry we'll be taking a look at Norman Osborn or the Green Goblin as played by William Defoe from the Spider-Man movies. A character that represents the classic trope of the Jekyll and Hyde conflict of duality, Norman Osborn was a man torn between good and evil. As Stevenson wrote in his novel, man is not truly one but truly too. Everyone has evil desires, but we do not act upon them out of fear of the punishment from the laws and norms of society. Due to a science experiment gone wrong, Norman's evil side, which was once dormant and kept in check, is now unleashed in all its wickedness as the persona of the goblin, a personality so evil that the mere inkling of his presence is enough to send Peter's spider sense into heightened alert. Just like Jekyll and Hyde, the story of Norman Osborn is one of evil triumphing over good. As something of a scientist himself, over the course of the film, Norman's personality is eventually swallowed by the persona of the goblin. However, unlike Jekyll, who deliberately chose to transform into Hyde to indulge his evil desires, Norman's transformation happened subconsciously, at least at the start before his state degenerated. After he trashes the lab and steals the suit and glider, he finds himself on the floor of his apartment the next morning, clueless as to the events of the previous night. However, as pressure builds up for Norman with threats against his company, the goblin is released more and more, to the point where Norman can hold a conversation with the goblin as a separate personality. Norman is a man who most would deem a normal functioning member of society. Otto Octavius describes him as a brilliant scientist who became greedy and misguided. As one might expect of an accomplished man like him, he has a strong sense of pride, as seen when he tells Peter to address him as Dr. Osborne instead of Mr. Osborne, and when he tells Harry never to be ashamed of who he is. He has some resentment in his life, with his ex-wife for instance, whom he describes as a beautiful woman who went after his trust fund like a pack of wolves. Also with his board of directors, who planned to sell the company that he sacrificed so much for. His relationship with his son Harry is a tenuous one, characterized by unmet expectations that he sees fulfilled in Peter Parker instead. With the persona of the Goblin, however, Norman's dormant evil side starts to surface. As the Goblin tells Norman in his reflection, he represents the ability to say whatever Norman won't and to do the things that Norman can't. He considers himself a gift to Norman, not a curse, and in the same manner he encourages the other villains in no way home to embrace their villainy. In his own words, his goal is to bring Norman what he's always wanted, power beyond his wildest dreams. So in essence, Norman's hidden desire was always to rule. The goblin takes that desire to its extreme. In his speech to Spider-Man to entice him to join forces, he appeals to him over the fact that they are exceptional people and that the city of eight million people exist to lift exceptional people on their shoulders. We also see this in No Way Home, when the goblin is first transported to the MCU. He mentions to Norman that this is a new world to conquer and berates him for his cowardice. Due to his pure evil nature, the goblin despises morality, especially in the form of heroism. He considers it a weakness, as seen by his interactions with both Spider-Men. In both instances, it appears that his goal is to convince them to abandon their sense of morality and to embrace their evil side. Interestingly enough, the Goblin is the villain that has made both these Spider-Men come the closest to crossing the line of killing. With Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, he openly discourages him from being a hero in his partnership offer, telling him that the public loves to see a hero fail. When Peter refuses, he later forces him to make a choice between MJ and the hostage cable car, 
telling him that this is the reward that a hero can expect. With Tom Holland's Spider-Man, this is seen even further. He highlights Peter's struggles from his secret identity and mocks him for being strong enough to have it all, but too weak to take it. He ridicules Peter for being part of Aunt May's holy moral mission, telling him that his morality is a pathetic sickness. Before he kills her, he says that it's his attempt to fix him. And right before he leaves, he rubs salt on wound by saying that no good deed goes unpunished. With his lack of morality, the goblin sees himself as the superior man, perhaps even with a god complex. He tells Tom's Peter that gods don't have to choose, and right before his impaling, he tells Toby's Peter that it's God who's speaking. In the 2002 movie, as the film progresses, we find more of the Goblin's persona starting to merge with Norman's. We see this at the Thanksgiving celebration when he creepily stares at MJ and when he starts sharpening knives in front of Aunt May. Those are the mannerisms of the goblin seeping through his expressions. In his right mind, Norman would never display such socially crass behavior. Norman would then become subservient to the persona of the goblin, as seen when he begs him for advice on how to defeat his greatest opponent. Eventually, by the end of the first film, it's likely that Norman has been regulated to being the dormant personality with the goblin being the one in control. Essentially, Norman is now the mask used by the goblin, just like the huge collection of masks scattered all over his house. The goblin is his true self now. When Norman appears to surface at the end asking for mercy, that is not Norman. It is the goblin using Norman as a last minute ploy. When he is transported to the MCU, that is not Norman either. It is still the goblin hiding behind Norman for protection from the unfamiliarity of a strange new world while he waits for the right moment to strike. With all that in mind, we come to the question, is Norman Osborn evil? His actions as the goblin certainly are wicked, but it's suggestible that Norman is no more evil than the average person. We all have an evil side that remains suppressed, perhaps more than we know. Norman's one was unleashed through his recklessness in science. At the end, after being cured, he remains oblivious and in a state of confusion over all that has happened. He was a sick man that needed help, but at the same time, you could say that Norman was somewhat responsible for allowing the goblin to take over. In their first conversation, the goblin plainly tells Norman that he knew what was happening all along. So perhaps Norman was indeed aware, and while he didn't choose to become the goblin, he allowed his evil persona to continue to operate as they have clearly aligned interests, with the goblin doing what Norman could only wish he could. At this point, Norman would also clearly know that he is suffering from a split personality, yet he does not make any attempt to seek help for his condition or attempt to resist his other persona. At least nothing from the film suggests this. Instead, he quickly becomes subservient to the goblin and behaves as its slave. Ultimately, Norman Osborn was a victim of science gone wrong, with his greatest flaw being his reckless approach in risking himself for his company's survival. He is an effective contrast to the hero, as he wields great power with no responsibility. So what do you think of Norman Osborn, folks? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and take care.